Hi, I'm Jeff Rhodes, and I wanted to talk to you today about Office 365 and SharePoint. In particular, I uh, wanted to do an example of uh, showing how we can control access to particular elements in Power Apps when uh, based on a list that's in SharePoint of our users. So it's following up on my last video where we saw how to just enable or disable a, uh, a an approval control just based on what my user was but I had that one hard-coded and this one goes a step further so uh, first don't forget to subscribe so uh, if you want to get more of these videos uh, we appreciate you doing that and I've got a book coming out or it may already be out depending on when you're viewing this called creating business applications with office 365 techniques in SharePoint power apps oh there it was let's turn that off that's kind of funny I was publishing my last video and it just finished up to uh, up to YouTube so it jumped in there a little bit but anyway techniques and SharePoint's power apps power bi and more and you can pre-order it or order it on Amazon and uh, once it gets closer it'll be in other bookstores and online environments as well so all right let's get started so we'll uh, I encourage you to watch some of my earlier videos particularly the one right before this where we created our Power Apps form, but we'll do a quick review here as well. So I'm going to go into SharePoint and I'm doing this example in our collaboration uh, spot. And I just did a video, the one that just uh, loaded up was how we did this in InfoPath because uh, some of you, if you've got older versions of SharePoint or you just like InfoPath for whatever reason, you may want to do it there. Even though I do re recommend moving to Power Apps as soon as you can. So we'll go into Site Contents. And what I did is I created an, a, a list called accounting users. Okay, and right now I've got my brother in there and it's got this kind of weird format here and that's because InfoPath likes it. Uh, but we'll see, uh, it, it turns out that uh, Power Apps doesn't care one way or, or another. So let's go ahead and change that back for this video just so we can so it looks a little bit better so that allow us to show the the list as well so I took the uh, what was the title column and just named it phone and then I have a user that's of type person or group and the concept here is that the end user you know the people the accounting department in this case they could maintain this list maybe make it unique permissions and then uh, when somebody uh, gets added or deleted to that group, they just come to that list and, and add and remove it. And it's much easier than them trying to figure out how to go into Power Apps, have the rights, republish the form. And even on that user, I'm just going to go back to the default, which is the name with presence, because uh, we don't need to have the same restrictions that we did in InfoPath. There we go. So if we look at that right now, I've got my brother and my wife in there. So a little family affair. The send email notification we'll use in, an, in a later video. But the idea is that we can use that when it comes time. If in our workflow we want to send an email to somebody that something needs to be approved, for example, we only send to the people in this list who have that set to yes. So that then when somebody goes on vacation, they can swap around who it is and we'll cover later how to use that but that's why that column's there so all right let's go in to our site contents and we'll go into our purchases power apps and what we've got right now is it's hard coded so even though i'm not in that list if i come in here and edit for example you'll see i'm allowed to uh, to approve that because it's hard coded to my email address let's go ahead and customize this in Power Apps and change that to use our list now instead. Again, we covered some of this in a previous video, but uh, I'll show you how we did it the last time. It's pretty quick. All right, we'll skip that. So what we have here is we've got our data card approved by accounting and we set the display mode 
and we did some logic. So let me zoom in there a little bit. So that was our logic before. So if our user email equaled my Office 365 email, then we did whatever the parent display mode was. Otherwise, we did just the view mode, which basically disabled it. So that's what we did before. But now we want to change that. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we go over to the view uh, menu and go to data sources. And you see there's we're already linked up to our purchases list. But I'll go over to connectors and I'll go to SharePoint and I'll add a connection. And we'll say create. And it'll give me my recent site. So I want to just select that site I'm in and I can just ch click on accounting users. So that allows me to get access to it. And you see it shows up over here. So, so far so good. And then what I do, I come back over to this data card and we'll give ourselves a little more room. So I, I still need the user email part, but I'll just delete it because I want to start from scratch. So what we're going to do, there's a nice function in there called filter. So let's start from the inside. We're going to filter and then notice how it gives me our two choices, you know, of our data sources. So I've got the accounting users. So the first parameter is that and the second parameter is what I'm going to filter on. So notice it gives me all the columns in there okay and the one that I want is user so rather than trying to compare the complex types I we probably could do that but I like to just go ahead and just click and let's just compare the email so we'll say where the user email equals and then I have the user function which is that or method and that's the current user who's logged in to Office 365 and it's got a uh, an email property as well. So right there will give us a, a data set. And now what we want to know is how big is it? So kind of like we did if you watch the InfoPath video where we did a count on a data connection query here, it's a little quicker. We can just, we do, they have a function called count rows. So if we say count rows filter, so we put that like that and then that that's greater than zero. Oh, and you can see I, it's doesn't know the thing because I forgot the S there. Let's try that. Now notice this is real important for other things. Delegation warning, the filter part of this formula might not work correctly on large data sets. So in the book, the Office 365 book I talked to you about before, I have a whole example where we built a a help ticketing system for our uh, group at the Air Force Academy. And that one had a lot of tickets. And basically what that warning means is that if, if the, the default limit is 500 rows. So if this filter could, if you know, this could return more than 500 rows, then it only get the first 500. And you can change that, but it, it, it makes things slower. And so in our case, what that means is if our list of accounting users is going to be more than 500 at some point, then we'd have to do a different way. And there's basic, the, the real problem is this user function here. So we could do something different. We basically could store that in a variable and then use it so we could get around it. But here we're not anticipating more than 500 users, so we're fine in that list. All right, so we're good to go and can bring that in. And that's what this little things also is talking about the little uh, exclamation point. So let's go ahead and save it. Now remember I'm not in the list and so uh, we should expect this to go you know not work but one thing we'll watch is typically what happens here is that it doesn't you have to refresh it a couple times so let's try it. We'll do it once without refreshing and I'm just going to edit this list. And of course, it made me a liar. It worked right away. But notice that this said on. Remember, we set the display mode to view. And so uh, we can see that it's on, but we can't edit it. So that's exactly what we want to have happen. Let's go back to our accounting users and let's swap out my brother here. 
And I'll put myself back in. Notice I can put multiple people in there, which we don't really need to since we have a separate row for each because it gets a little ugly if, uh, you know, we're trying to say the yes, no for the uh, whether to send an email or not. So I'll put my name in there. And we'll save. And we'll go back over here and we'll edit. Notice it didn't do it that time. Let's refresh or reload. Try it again. Ah, there we go. So now I can approve it or not. So we've been able to set it so that it's reading that list. And now all the user has to do is come back over and we can put unique permissions on this and say, okay, accounting group, you just maintain this list and you can change this sending email notifications, which we'll get to later, of who we want to get uh, emails to. And that's much easier for them than going in and editing uh, the coding inside a form. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, you can pick up the book if that's of interest to you. Talk to you soon. Thanks.